Right now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. It is 837. Larry, good friend Larry Kudlow is on the line. He's, of course, the, the host of Kudlow Report on CNBC and the Larry Kudlow Show right here on WML. Heard every more, every Saturday morning at 7, or Saturday evening, I'm sorry, at 7 p.m. Larry, how are you? Good morning, good morning. All right, look, uh, yesterday Ben Bernanke had some comments, and all I know is that the Dow went crazy, <laughs> but apparently it had something to do with uh, the feeling that uh, his comments suggested the Fed may print more money. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Well, I don't think the Fed should print any more money. Um, the rally yesterday, just to clarify, so Bernanke talks to the um, business economists, national business economists, and basically said he's still worried that the economy is not growing fast enough to create enough jobs. Okay, you know, he's a historian of the 1930s Depression, right? Mm -hmm. And they had the 1936-1937 recession in a depression, and I think Bernanke still worries about that. So I think his message was, we are going to stay accommodative. We are going to keep our zero interest rate target. And they have this plan called Operation Twist, right, where they're... They're buying long-term bonds, and they're selling short-term bonds in order to keep long-term rates as low as possible. Okay, I don't really think the Fed controls long rates. I think the market does, but the Fed thinks it controls long rates. <laughs> they're right. continuing to do that. And he sort of hinted that when this bond-buying program runs out at the end of June, the way I read it was that they will continue. In other words, they'll start another one at the end of June. I don't think he was really signaling new... QE quantitative easing three. I don't. I didn't really hear that. I think that's still on the edge of the table. If you go, if the economy really heads south, which I don't think it will. But I think he's saying more. We're going to keep this up. We want to be accommodative. We want a zero interest rate. And we want long rates to stay low. And the stock market did have a terrific rally on that news. One hundred and sixty some points. All right. Obviously, a lot of attention here in Washington. I just don't want to crush the dollar. You know. Here's my basic point. QE, where they really start pumping new money in, will really crunch the dollar. And that will raise oil prices to $150 a barrel. And that will just wreak havoc on the economy and consumers and real incomes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, right. If you go from here, uh, what the Fed is doing now is okay. The dollar is fairly steady. I'd like to see it higher, but it's fairly steady. You start pumping in brand new money, then the risk is the dollar falls and commodity prices, including oil, skyrocket. Mm. Sorry. I just want to add that. All right. Um, like I said, there's a little, obviously a lot of attention here in Washington at the Supreme Court as they get into the individual mandate. Will Obamacare stand uh, the test of, of the court and the justices? Um, what it, What is the feeling about what this will do to the economy? What would it do to certain stocks if it is overturned? Well, that's interesting and complicated because, um, of course, I'm very much opposed to Obamacare, and I think you've got to have limits on federal power. Okay, I think the federal government has no business telling us what we should buy or what we can't buy or anything like that. So I'm opposed. I'm not a constitutional lawyer. Um, I also don't like the economics of Obamacare. I mean, look, this is a big spend and tax and regulate uh, program, mm -hmm. and the spending is already the estimates have nearly doubled. Tax hikes go up next year. There are massive regulations on what companies can and cannot do with their health care plans, how much it's going to cost, what has to go into it. Many businessmen will tell you they're not hiring because they're worried about Obamacare regulations and mandates. I mean, you hear that a lot. Now, having said that, some of the health care companies did very well yesterday. I'm not sure why there was no you know, new definitive news. I noticed Supreme. that. What's that all about? That's a good question, and it's something of a mystery because we didn't learn anything yesterday. But I had a guy on last night, CEO of a big hospital management company. He likes the fact that Obamacare will provide subsidies and will have people um, mandated to, go, to buy health insurance one way or another, either the government pays for them or not, because it helps his emergency room problem. In other words, hospitals want the money, and a lot of insurance companies want the money. I mean, they were in favor of Obamacare right. two years ago, so bear that in mind. I won't say they see it as a free lunch, because they're going to be regulated like all get out. Um, profit margins are going to be regulated. Government's going to be in their knickers, but um, a lot of these guys want it. A lot of the health care guys want it. 
if if we get in this, we get into the meat of the arguments today. If there are, and you get little hints from where people are standing, and if, if we get hints that they have some real problems uh, with Obamacare, what is likely to be the the market reaction? Can you determine that yet? I mean, because it, it it doesn't seem to make sense to me either. No, it's it's very hard. Um you know, probably a dangerous exercise. And by the way, hints, right. I don't know what hints mean. You know, a lot of people tell me, a lot of lawyers and people that have argued cases say to me, yeah, you got to listen to what they say, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything. And that's very important. You had this very uh, interesting discussion of taxes, right? Uh, uh, this is not a tax bill, so therefore the anti-injunction uh, right. clause can't be kicked in. <laughs> but today they're going to say it is a tax bill <laughs> in order to pass the Commerce Clause test, when in fact all this time they've been telling us there is no taxes, mm -hmm. right? And uh, these are these are just penalties. So I don't know what to read into that. To me, that seems like an obvious contradiction. And seems like uh, uh, either if it's not a tax bill, then the Commerce Clause can't extend to mandating personal behavior. But but what do I know? I mean, I don't know what the heck this is going to be. We're not going to know until what late June, July. Yeah, if that. Like that. Yeah, if that. I mean, I think it's not a good idea to speculate on stocks uh, on the basis of what you hear in the questioning. I know everybody's going to play that game. I just don't think that's healthy. Uh, for your portfolio. I do think, however, the stock market has more to run. In other words, I'm still fairly bullish in the run. All right. All right. That's what I want to hear. Thank you, Larry. As always, we'll talk to you again next week.